Hi there, welcome to Victim to Victor, the podcast dedicated to empowering abuse survivors and inspiring healing, hope and positive change. I'm Anu Verma, a published author, and in every episode, I'll sit down with a guest and embark on an insightful conversation about trauma, as well as practical strategies to start the healing process. So let's get started. I hope you enjoy the show. And here is our wonderful Wendy, all the way from Lincolnshire. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing, the well-being alchemist? I absolutely love that, by the way. It's cool, isn't it? No, I'm doing okay, actually. Yeah, doing okay. And I'm glad spring is coming. It's finally sprung, hasn't it? Yeah, spring is in the air. It just feels different, you know, as soon as spring comes. I just, out of principle, I went and ate my lunch outside today. <laughs> absolutely it's time vitamin d feed our souls Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh fantastic so thank you so much for coming on to my show i know we've been trying to schedule this in for quite some time now and Mm -hmm. i'm so glad that that you finally are to share your wisdom and your journey with my listeners which i'm excited to hear about as well because i don't think i've heard i know much about your history so it'd be great to kind of find out more about you where you've come from and where you are today okay okay so so basically um i came into kind of um things like eft meditation um because of a personal journey so um i was in the corporate world i was doing very well i'm, I'm a qualified project manager um itil um which is more in the it world um and i basically crashed and burned i burnt out and mm-hmm. i had me so I was diagnosed quite quickly, actually. I was quite fortunate. My, my GP was on the ball. Um, and um, three years of my life that took, actually. Um, but wow. I am completely recovered. And it was really then that I, I had to come into my own and really work out how to help myself. Because um, the NHS is great at saving lives. It's not yeah. great at taking a holistic approach. No. Um, yeah. So really, it, it, holistic for me was my journey, and I'd already come to that um, earlier with with fertility issues. Mm-hmm. So I'd done that, um, and unfortunately, um, I'd had quite a sickly childhood. I had a defective kidney. Oh. So okay. so it was actually a string of kidney infections that brought the ME on. They think with the post viral oh. fatigue and stuff. So okay. so it really brought me. It, it kind of knocked all the ego out of me you know because yeah. my, my ego was in the workplace I was good I was thriving I was enjoying it cool. um and and yeah yeah so I, I, I that's how I came to to do and to study different modalities um so so I started in um first of all I just did the anatomy and physiology I I uh, I then came to massage because massage is one of the things that relieved my pain in my body yeah. When I had the ME, I used to get a lot of muscle spasms and, and, and things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I used to go to the MS um, therapy center. They used to accept me. Um, and then I uh, uh, meditation was a big thing in, in getting me out. But I, I tried Ayurvedic medicine. Um, uh, I changed my diet completely. was seeing an Ayurvedic doctor. Um, but another thing that really, really helped me was hyperbaric oxygen chambers. So, so really, I just explored. Wow. And... I really came to appreciate mm. all these different modalities that are out there um, yeah. and then fell into my passion, which was coming into things like EFT. Amazing. Wow. So many amazing modalities you've just spoken about there. Like, I know it's mine field. Yeah, it is. I know. And one of my passions, which is a recent passion, is Ayurveda. So was it was it the herbs that you were on? I was a whole caboodle. Um, So it was back, it was, I actually saw Dr. Shantha Godagama, who's like the UK's leader in in, in all of this. Um, And he, he, back then I was living in Milton Keynes. So he lived in Milton Keynes um, and he was very good. So I had the mama puncture every, every week. I had the herbs, I followed his diet. Yeah. And it was, it was one of the few times I felt much, much better. I'll never forget the first mama puncture because I 
I didn't really register that it was essentially acupuncture, isn't it? And 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 mm. he was like, "We're going to start treatment today." I was like, "Okay." And next thing you know, I had a needle stabbed in my forehead. Oh my I was God. like, okay, I really started. <laughs> I thought we're maybe herbs. <laughs> okay, but I floated out of that. Absolutely floated. And 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 then when you go for the massage and the steam cabinets and the oils and <sighs> that's wow. yeah yeah that's brilliant. Nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah, because I know the herbs. Uh, I'm actually taking the herbs at the moment as well, just for hormonal balance. Because I know that my mm. hormones just they go haywire if I don't look after myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But what's the what's the other other thing that you did um, to do with oxygen? hyperbaric oxygen chamber? Yeah. So one of the things that happened when I had ME. Um, I had the strangest fortune. I'd been on a holiday to Egypt and then I won a holiday to Peru the next year. Nice. Um, and, and by then I had really bad ME. I could barely walk. My, the, my doctors wanted me on, in a wheelchair. I was that bad. Wow. So we went on this holiday to Peru and I couldn't do the walk to the sun gate, one up Machu Picchu and all that. But and it was it was an incredibly taxing two weeks for me because you've got altitude sickness to deal with as well. Mm. But I came back and I was well for two solid weeks. I could walk, I could do whatever I wanted. And I was like, Weird. and of course, what do they do when they train athletes? They often take them to a higher altitude yeah, to help yeah. them with their oxygen levels. So I thought there's something in this. And then I discovered that a lot of MS therapy centers yeah. have hyperbaric oxygen chambers. And if you if you look them up, you'll see they're, ama- they're recommending them a lot for long COVID now. And of course, co- mm-hmm. long COVID is essentially post-viral fatigue. It's ME. So, so, um, yeah, so, so, so at the MS centre I went to, you actually went into a pressure, you go, go into a chamber, you sat with others, almost like in flight seats, but in a circle, you put your oxygen mask and we just all sat there reading books while they changed the pressure of the chamber. But I did do one a couple of weeks ago as well, because I, I've been feeling a bit under the weather. Yeah. And I thought, do you know, what, I should take my own flipping advice. <laughs> It's me going, you should try and I <laughs> So I, I went and paid for one locally and it was a single chamber where oh, you lay down. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, but it's perspex on the side so you could see out. So it wasn't claustrophobic. So okay. for me, that was an hour's napping and meditation, nailed it, and getting a whole load of oxygen under pressure. And lo and behold, literally about four days after, it's like I turned a corner. I suddenly, I, I, I'd had some kind of inflammation in my body and I couldn't even get my rings off and get them off again now. Wow. So what, what, I wonder what happens then, because obviously you're fueling all your muscles and all your nerves with all this yeah. oxygen, Repairing. which they probably mm. don't even get this amount of oxygen. No. And, and, and of course, things like cancer cannot thrive in an oxygen rich environment. Oh. So, yeah. And people need to know about it. You know, I think yeah. it's really valuable. Yeah. That, you're probably absolutely. not going to get it on the NHS. But again, no. You know, if you take your self care seriously and, and, and you don't yeah. wait for a pill mm. and you can potentially go and investigate these other opportunities, I recommended it to a guy. I also go for cryotherapy, actually. That's something I do once a month. Oh, that's, um, yeah. And and um, the guy there, he, he he got long COVID. And I said, right, with the cryotherapy, do the hyperbaric. He yeah. swears by it. He swears it, it accelerated his recovery. And mm. when you're actually in that session, how do you feel? Do you get lightheaded? no I didn't actually the, the only thing you get is that you get the ears changing pressures so you get some popping and, and what have you but um so I I, I dread to think what it'd be like if you had a pro- problem with your ears I don't, I don't know oh, if you'd cope terribly well but yeah other than that absolutely fine I was just quite chilled really oh wow yeah and you're also you're a wild swimmer so hence oh, your um, cryotherapy wow so tell I'm us about that well, I'm absolutely passionate about wild, wild, wild swimming, actually. Yeah. I, I When I, I left, I used to live in Milton Keynes, and, and one of the things is I wanted to make more time to do more wild swimming. I was already a stand-up paddleboarder, okay. um, and I, I just found myself keep wanting to jump in. So so I thought, right, I'm going to really nail this wild swimming. Um, but um, obviously there are risks, and particularly cold water in rivers and things like that. So what yeah. I did, I went and did my Wim Hof fundamentals training. So I did the whole day doing the training with a guy that trained with Wim Hof himself, who knows Wim. And yeah. uh, and then at the end of the day, we all get in an ice bath and they literally, they pour ice cubes into this thing. To, so oh four of us sat in this big tub together, surrounded. I've got photos of this with me like this. <laughs> <laughs> I looked great. 
<laughs> but um but yeah and, and but for me that gave me the confidence that I knew that I could swim in cold water I knew how to control my breathing because we know that breath work is is so important for vagal tone and things like that yeah. so so yeah so for me it's actually part of my self-care now I actually notice if, if I'm a little bit Ooh, then I've, I've not been swimming enough um so so like Sunday I, I was I went to the coast I made sure I got in 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 the water wow yeah, and I don't wear a, I don't wear a wet, wet suit at all Oh, that was going to be my next question what what, what do you yeah. wear no I just just my swimsuit so so I'm oh. actually I've swum through three or four winters now all the way through even Christmas Christmas Boxing Day New Year's Day we do it but you know you meet with different yeah. people you have great fun um and, and like you know a lot of people are coming to it particularly through COVID I think mm. we there used to be like some, maybe half a dozen of us meet at one particular river spot that we meet on a Sunday and I think in during COVID I think there was 40 one day people People came to it. Uh, not everybody swam through the winter. They haven't all continued, but I think it's opened people's eyes. I think it's and mm. and of course, if you think in terms of mindfulness, yeah, mm. you you can't be more mindful and more present than when you're focusing on your breath, getting in cold water. Um, and I think research is showing that it, it doesn't have to be ice cold. I think anything between fourteen degrees, okay. you're supposed to get the benefit. Really, so it doesn't have to be ice or ice cold. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's just getting into water. Yeah, yeah, just getting into the cold water. Um, okay. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't think it has to be for a long time. I know mm. when I did the Wim Hof Fundamentals training, they, the initial session would literally it was two minutes in the cold water, oh, and then we all got out, and then we were like, "Should we do it again? <laughs> <laughs> Jump back in again?" Oh, I, I love it. that. <laughs> yeah. It was a bunch of crazies. <laughs> And also what I'm, what I'm noticing a lot, you're just like this beam of light, just full of energy. And you're so <laughs> motivated. The fact that you just went out there and you just took your health into your own hands. You were like, I'm not going to let, you know, the, the Emmy win and I'm not going to give up. I'm going to go and fight this. I love that attitude, by the way. And it's the fact that you did, you fought. And I think there is a fine line, though, it, it, about acceptance, fighting, um, try not to over resist with ill health you mm. kind of have to go through there are processes aren't there you know yeah. from trauma work mm. there are processes that you need to acknowledge and and, and, and move through uh, and I think initially the fighting was probably too hard it was when I then went okay I'm gonna have this a bit longer than six months clearly you know mm. and then in, integrating it and doing the work and pacing myself and 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 I think that's when things started to seriously improve. But but yeah. returning back to the body and listening to the body is somatic practices. And if you think like the wild swimming, the cryotherapy, these are all very somatic. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I've realised with age um, that, that I, I'm so sensory that that's where I need to be more than anything wow. is in the soma so yeah yeah it's been it's been very enlightening and I, I don't know about you but it's just an endless journey yeah there's, there's always something it feels sometimes a little bit like whack-a-mole you, you 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 know you get one problem solved and something else pops up over here and you yeah. chat that one down and it, it comes up and exactly. and I think you know there isn't this perfect you know, women particularly, our hormones changing, we're evolving, we, yeah. we're pre-pubescent, then we've got puberty, then we've got babies, then we've got menopause. Mm. It's just shifting. Okay. It's like this tectonic plate going all the time. Yeah. So I think, yeah, taking responsibility, and, and uh, uh, I think it's really important. It is. Yeah, it I do. Is, yeah. Mm. Do you find as well with the mental health? So I know with cold water swimming, that's been proven to have some mental health benefits. Do you think that that's really helped you as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And it, it's quite interesting. You know, there's, there's, I like the 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 socialization of it, the, the connection with others, but I also like a nice solitary swim. So I've got one lake, which I know it's a privately owned lake that that they supervise. I do that one on my own. I can do 400 meter loop, and I'm just like wow. looking for the kingfishers, talking to the ducks going you know that kind yeah. of thing I, I, yeah I think I think again it's this whole why are we treating the body and the mind so separately all the yeah. time where where is the, the this one connection that we think that that, that links this you know this is all integrated <laughs> or <laughs> with the program it's all there and it goes both ways you know, I think I think that I think this is the other the other problem. I think we've we've been raised in particularly in Western society to think from the head down. But actually, yeah. sometimes we've got to go from the bottom up. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, there are yeah. different approaches and, and, and this is where one size doesn't fit all. And mm -hmm. essentially it will all benefit from the same things, but we've got to sometimes come at them at a different time or a different way. Yeah. And this is why mm -hmm. now, you know, there's so many books out there about trauma, the fact that, you know, the, the body keeps the score, yeah. that the trauma is stored in the body and we really mm -hmm. need to maybe do some movement, you know, and yeah. just, yeah, move our bodies more to release that trauma. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, EFT, I, I'm passionate about. I've been a practitioner for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's other ways to release it from the body. Cold water swimming is, is again, is supposed to be very good if you if you persist and you do that. Um, but even, you know, I, <laughs> I experimented with this recently where I said to my husband, right, I need movement with getting the emotion out. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. You know, I haven't got anybody, you know, doing my EFT at the moment. I'm having a pause on that. I said, so. I'm going to have a moan now and a rant. I don't need you to solve this problem, but while we're walking, just let me. So don't try and fix me. This okay. is just to get it out and then I'm done. And it worked. Wow, just so having a rant. I just I basically downloaded the things that were making me unhappy about a particular scenario. Yeah. We walked like little demons through the woods as I'm going. And yeah. and yeah, yeah. They was like, I think I'm okay now. It's out. It's done. Wow. And it, it's like it's not blocking that energy is it it's it's yeah. not pushing things down because that's yeah. the way we should behave it's just yeah. without spewing it everywhere without spreading hurt because we know hurt people hurt people yeah so if we yeah. sort that stuff out that's then we good. we can be there we can be that that positive influence on others can't we yeah because you like to talk about triggers a lot I mean you know was this when you when you were triggered yeah yeah it was it was a family thing that had triggered me so so I was like right, okay I've got to, I've got to work through this and I think I think that uh, I find it it's like I had an email say from Aldi's you know where we know that Mother's Day is a sensitive time and do you want to receive these emails it, it whilst triggering is when you're getting a lesson it's when you're being going that this is something you probably need to address or something you need to review if you're being triggered by something mm -hmm. it's about your internal processes it's not necessarily always what somebody else is saying and I'm mm -hmm. saying this with kindness but um it's acknowledging that and then going okay what well, what what's really that about what what's the let's dig down a little bit and let's see whether that really is just anger or actually is that hurt from something else or mm -hmm. actually is it something else and and so triggers are information yeah okay. I think more people need to we, 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 I think the world would be a better place if people recognize that as opposed to yeah. you've hurt me because you've triggered me yeah okay I love that change in the dialogue yeah mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah it's oh, getting a little that. bit too easy to go I've been triggered yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> oh, <hi>, actually <laughs> I hear that quite a lot yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we might have to edit that bit I don't know <laughs> no, it's fine. No. <laughs> but also yeah just the fact that again you know we were talking before um I hit the record button the fact that you, you don't get ill I think that's phenomenal yeah I get I, I think do you know what I learned very lot a lot my, my husband's always been very good at listening to his body okay and of course I'd pushed mine to the nth degree which is why I burnt out and why I got ME I just didn't wow. listen I just didn't get the memo it, it kept being oh, flashed yeah. up and I was like no I'll carry on working I've got to do this I've got to do that and it, you know that's that kind of driver that strength driver in me yeah. and then I watched my husband go oh, I don't feel right today I'm gonna to have to have sick and I'll be like you're not probably sick how could you do that but he never ever got ill wow. so I've actually raised my children the same so mm -hmm. I don't worry about school attendance terribly much um and it's just like no if you need a mental health day you have a mental health day if you need to recuperate regroup Perfect. that's what you do yeah. they don't really get sick either they say none of us have had COVID oh, none of us um I mean they get the odd kind of ailment the odd problem but they're never off for like weeks or on end or anything like that none of us are There's something mm. to be said about that good genes yeah. good lifestyle it all helps yeah mm. yeah I think yeah hopefully a relatively good lifestyle but yeah, yeah yeah oh fantastic and the eight pillars of wellness um is that something that that you've created yourself no I mean that's something that's been out in the ether for quite some time the eight pillars of, of wellness uh, um, but I do emphatically believe that wellness is, is you know coming from all aspects that it isn't just your health yeah you know, mm -hmm. it can't just be your health um mm. it, it's got to be how you're feeling and yourself your spirituality your, your general well-being it, it's more 
And I, I think um, in a society where it's too easy to get a pill, yeah. I think it's acknowledging that things aren't always a quick fix, that there's a, there's a bigger a bigger outlook to be had, mm. I think. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, there is. There is, yeah, and it's um, about, yeah, like you said, a lot of us, we, we tend to go to counselling to try and clear our heads and then, you know, we'll go to the gym to try and uh, work our body out. But then where's that connection? I don't know, yoga obviously helps to connect the mind. Body yeah, the you, you know, I, I've got a real love relationship with yoga. I really understand <laughs> the benefits of it, but I'm not bendy and I never have been. Even as a child, I was I, I've, mm. I've got quite tight muscles down. The, I think it's a cyclist thing down the back of my legs. And and mm. um, but I, I do believe that 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 it's a, almost a multidisciplined approach to yourself, finding these mm. li- these different tools, this pick and mix that I said earlier about um, that you do that, that contribute to your happiness yeah. and to your well-being um I, and I think it's paramount and and I think and maybe, maybe this is one of the issues that I, I said to you before we were recording that you know I've got a few teenagers on my books again at the moment mm-hmm. and you know they don't do PE like I did back when I was a kid I mean god we, we, we did loads of PE they barely do anything and I was only at my son's school the other day and I said you know do you do anything in the morning like meditation with them or or get them out to to do a walk or exercise and they were like no, I know there's some primary schools do it. And again, there's research that says if you yeah. start the day with a walk or with some kind of exercise and you've got more blood flow to the body, to the brain, to the yeah. frontal cortex, which we know is where our higher thinking is, um, surely we're going to have better kids. So I actually put a request in for my son to attend some mindfulness sessions. Fantastic. They're going to do as, as, as a little interception. But, but you know, yeah. there, are, there are organisations like um, there's an organisation called Mindfulness in Schools Project which wow. is brilliant. I've been to one of their conferences and why, why aren't all schools engaging? Why aren't we getting these kids to sit in their bodies or, and then just make sure they're exercising yeah. and they're moving? We've got a generation of gamers. Yeah, we have. You're right. And it's the curriculum really needs to adapt to the times because the times yeah. are changing. Like, why are we still working through this old school curriculum, which it's not really serving us anymore? It's not, it's not. And I think it serves girls more than it serves boys because mm. they're more up there, whereas boys are yeah. more physical. And, you know, if yeah. you look at the, the studies between between girls and boys when they're really young, you know, the, the boys are really into sorting out their major motor skills. The girls are sorting out their minor motor skills. Mm. There, there's a different thing going on, is, you know, yeah. and, and we're making these kids just sit there at young yeah. ages. Oh, God. <laughs> well, and not, not, not talk to each other. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, look forward, <laughs> sit there. Oh, you know some of these you know they need to move when they learn they need I mean we we did we did a little revision session with my son with my daughter uh, and and my daughter and I sat on the bed and we're literally gripping each other where he couldn't see because he just couldn't keep still while he's chatting and we're getting him to revise history and I'm like just leave it just leave it just let him move because he can't do that in school you know and and I think it's really unfortunate it Mm. is I guess that's why a lot of parents are adopting home home school learning I did do a year myself. I did. Through COVID. I did. No, I did. Well, no, I kind of, I'm not doing it again, actually. But <laughs> sorry, got COVID. But no, I did do it. My, my son was in year six. So oh, I've got twin. Okay. So oh, I, I gave them both the option. Um, she declined mm-hmm. primarily because there was a ski trip going on that she wanted to go to. Oh, okay. Um, so, so she carried on going to school. But I actually home educated for a year with uh, my son. Um, and, and I did things like... Um, it was interesting because when he, because it was year six, he then went into secondary school and it was very much, well, you know, he's going to be quite behind. Mm. He wasn't. And I hadn't really done the academic subjects. I'd, I'd done things. I'd gone to forest school. I took him to drum lessons. We there, There's lots of communities in homeschooling. So yeah. we did a lot of community stuff. Um, I even did a trip to Rome. Oh. I took him to Rome for a long, like, I don't know, about four yeah. days. He had a great time. Yeah, you know, I love know, that. Iron Bridge, I think, to Iron Bridge one time. Yeah, it was. He'd had enough by the time it was. He wanted. He did want to yeah. go back. He was ready for the socialization in terms yeah. of. We, we were socializing, but he wanted to get back to his peer group, and I respected that. But I'd have had him off for a few more years, I think. Wow! Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is fantastic. And mm-hmm. something which you haven't mentioned, which I think is really important, especially because you know that this podcast is aimed for survivors of abuse. Uh-huh. You're also a survivor of abuse. 
unfortunately I am yes I am and I've been a bit delicate in how I, I deal with it because you know he is on the peripheral I, I don't okay. necessarily speak to him or anything um and you know as you grow you kind of look at why they're like that and you know and I, I I'm now thinking oh maybe he's this maybe this that. whereas historically I'd have gone he's a flipping sociopath that's it yeah um, yeah. Label. But, so, yeah yeah it was to a point where when I left um and then he met his second his second wife contacted me yeah. um and she was like you know what was the problem I'm like I'm, I'm not going there you've got kids I'm, I'm not dealing with it and it was when she went it's just that he tried to strangle me on Christmas Eve or New oh, Year's Eve like, okay ring me oh, <laughs> and I felt really bad but I didn't I, I I wasn't convinced I hadn't found my voice and I didn't feel mm. I could warn her you don't know whether it is just you sometimes and yeah mm-hmm. you know it, I was a career confident person so there there potentially was going to be disbelief about it and uh, um and it's really sad I mean I lived in a flat and I had a police officer live below and the amount of times she used to come upstairs and check on me yeah. I never took that I never no we're fine yeah everything's fine oh yeah we just had a little row I'd oh, be like she must goodness. have had everything yeah I mean seriously what a yeah. muppet you know so yeah. so yeah I think I think um uh, it, it's never acceptable it's never acceptable I, you know and I don't know about you but my poor second husband <laughs> current husband yeah. hopefully final husband yes. um I, I tested him in the beginning to see if he'd hit oh. me I've got to be honest okay. I did I that man has got the patience of a saint yeah you know oh. and, and and looking back I mean that was pretty immature of me but again you, it's part of the learning it's part it of the growth is. And you know, if if he'd hit me, he's twice the size. He would have sent me flying. Oh, um, but okay. he didn't raise a hand, and and I knew then I was safe. But it took a while, it took a while to feel safe. Oh, really? And and I think nobody can really understand how trapped you feel mm, and how bad true. you've got to be to get out of it. So yeah, I think that the 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 the, the, the final thing for me was uh I fell pregnant. I lost it. Then I had these fertility issues, and, and uh, I was like, "This man cannot father my children. Right. He cannot. But otherwise, I will never go. I will never go." And yeah. that propelled me. That that it wasn't just about my survival. Then it was that if I want kids, yeah, absolutely, I'm not the right person. So it propelled me forward. But wow. it's sad that it took that long, and it did take a long time. How long? I was with him from the age of fourteen. Wow. Um, yeah. Child. Yeah, and I didn't leave until I was 29. It's the majority yeah. of your life. Wow. It's a big chunk. It's a massive chunk. It's a massive yeah. chunk. And, I, I, you know, I, I for a long time, there was a lot of um, self-criticism about how long I did stay in. Mm. I felt like I'd lost so many valuable years, yeah. you know, to this and to the control that I was, you know, I remember thinning out the divorce papers and it was things like you know he locked the windows and wouldn't let me have the fire on and the control was just you know and then it it was just unbelievable and that's you know the the physical wasn't even the worst thing I don't think and it was there it was there but but I think even at the beginning I don't think domestic abuse was taken that seriously no it was um so I didn't really feel I had anywhere to go you know back then there was this train of thought that that a man had a conjugal right and you know dominance in the relationship and so I just didn't expect to be believed and 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 I'd I'd actually been um um very mildly very mildly (laughs) Uh, sexually assaulted when I was about 14 and I remember going in and and I was not sexually experienced I went into the police and he went you must have encouraged him well that set the president for my belief whether I'd be believed (laughs) that was another thing and it was kind of like well where do you go with that you know so so yes but I think I think there are more avenues now for people to take yeah yeah um, absolutely yeah, um, and yeah. It's just finding the right person and I think people are more aware mm. now of things you know if you see a bruise on somebody's arm you're like, right, what's that and you're going to see from their body language whether that mm. was walking into a door or not yeah absolutely and plus um, it was only um kind of just end of January where they, they changed the law where, where they state that domestic um abuse now it's, it's not only violence, it is actually emotional abuse as well. So there yeah. you go. 
that's good yeah. and it needs to be it does need to be I, you know I, I, I'm very aware it does work both ways it's not always men that are hurting women yeah. no you know yeah. same-sex relationships and it can happen the other way and Absolutely, you know yeah. um but but yeah I think something had, has to be done and needed to be done um and and it's sad that some of us have to dig ourselves out of a hole on our own sometimes yeah yeah and, even my own grandparents I remember my grandfather saying you know you're the granddaughter of your grandmother who was a very strong woman he was almost disbelieving why would you put up with that <laughs> like yeah god i can't explain it no oh my god absolutely not i mean you only have to watch the likes of tinder swindler to understand how we get wrapped around these men fingers we're women we you know we want that we want love we do. And, and you know what? I think my, my the movie that I always related my relationship to, and I don't know if you remember, it's a Julia Roberts movie, Sleeping with the Enemy. Oh, yes. That one. I mean, even the way he would line up the tea towels, that was what I was having. Like, oh, I'm not tea towels. So, yeah. so, yeah, I remember saying to the second one, what's that movie? And yeah. she went, oh, my God, when, oh, my God, when. <laughs> like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I went through that. <laughs> so, yeah, life, life's interesting. But, I mean, you know, but maybe, maybe he's changed maybe he's happy maybe it's okay and maybe I brought the worst out in him with my reactions I don't know for not setting boundaries but Um, like you said at the beginning I was a child when I got together with him Mm, so so I didn't have that opportunity to set the boundaries and to to to, to do things and it probably allowed him to run riot in a lot of respects I'm not saying I'm owning it and it's my fault not for one second but I'm also seeing my part in it in it and in how he became and and hopefully he's he's now wife is strong enough and has enough life experience and he's not like it yeah well yeah let's you know wish him well and hope Mm. he yeah hope he's happy yeah (laughs) mainly (laughs) (laughs) but also yeah I just want to know about you know what you've been up to recently because I know you've been learning all about the polyvagal theory (gasps) yeah yeah so so uh, you know polyvagal theory really really interests me you know we uh, I've I've kind of been it's it's been I've been learning about it Uh, I've got a few books on it as well now and the different exercises um but um somebody I study under and go on his retreats quite a lot brought it to my attention I thought 10 years ago actually um and and also because I'm I'm passionate about neurodiversity because I've got my son on the spectrum um polyvagal theory is really interesting about where you are on what they call the polyvagal ladder whether you're in that fight flight and freeze or and 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 how you're up and down that ladder all a lot so you know some people are are constantly the ptsd you're constantly hypervigilant potentially or stressed or well you're stuck in a certain state on that ladder and it's about doing things to bring you down the ladder but obviously something can stress you out send you back up on it it's about bringing yourself down and this self-regulation that you can put in place Mm -hmm. um to, to to help with your vagal term which we know um is influential in your immunity in in yeah. your well-being um so yeah it's something that really really interests me and and, and um particularly with the, the the teenagers and stuff you know yeah. if they've gone through a particularly um big period of being so stressed mm. it's like well let's get your nervous system down first before we try and yeah. do any other work mm. you know let's get you in a better place because they don't realize they're stuck yeah it's like they've mm-hmm. gone into fast forward and, and they're just Thank stuck you. in this fast forward so the mm-hmm. nervous system i think it is is so important um mm-hmm. yeah and again the wild swimming the cryotherapy that mm-hmm. you know bringing bringing this vagal tone keeping that vagal tone right yeah. uh, and breath work you know yeah. oh people yeah. are underestimating the breath work but that seems to be coming into its form more and more people are doing the cold water immersion the breath work with people yeah. um it's so valuable and yet we all breathe yeah, so exactly. anybody else that's not into kind of a holistic approach would just like of course I'll do breath work I'm not breathe every day <laughs> <That's it laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah and then the other the other thing I'm studying at the moment I am studying I, I already do coaching um I do something called MBIT coaching which is multiple brain integration which is oh, um okay. it, it's this practice whereby we have three brains the one in the head the one in the heart and the one in the gut yeah. um and we know that that actually there are memory neurons in all three actually and that when all three are aligned we come to our best choices and we, we're empowered so um but I've already been doing that for quite a few years but um, I'm now studying my ILM coaching certificate my level seven 
Oh, excellent. excellent. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Really enjoying it, actually. Yeah, yeah I'm fine. And, and it's just giving me extra tools again. And they, they, you know, they're bringing us to all these modalities that you and I have probably come across over the years, like, you know, um, transaction analysis, NLP, which yeah. obviously you know. Um, but yeah, but but it's giving me some kind of different models to use and to to pull in now with clients. So I'm quite looking forward to to do it. And I do think we all benefit from having a coach. I, I yeah. there's always a, um, a few leaps forward. I think when you spend time with somebody else, external, yeah. objective, um, and That's working great. in your interest. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, and again, it's having that ac- accountability because a lot of the time we can't get the answers by ourselves. You're just too just, close. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, You're too close. Right. To you, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I know yeah. sometimes it's like, yeah, sometimes, you know, when I'm doing work with my coach, I'm just learning the most basic things. And it's stuff which I know, but I would never have applied it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Amazing. You need to you need a reality check. And I think, you know, those of us that are continuing to, to, to evolve and develop, which which is my ambition is to always keep going. I, th- I think we won't yeah. stop learning till the day we die. So we yeah. might as well just keep going. I love that and, and I enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. I thrive from it, you know, otherwise I'd probably be an ascended being if I was done oh. and dusted. So let's just yeah. keep going. You know? <laughs> and, and, you know, I think those of us that are doing that, there's just always so much to reintegrate. And sometimes yeah. there's a little bit of unlearning to do some relearning. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think, you know, if, if we could kind of buck the education system of we don't need to learn anymore, we don't need somebody teaching us something and mm. embrace this, I think we've all got something to learn from everybody. I mean, you and I were saying about our curiosity, which, you know, we're curious, yeah. nosy, I don't know, whichever it is, but it's just yeah. enthusiasm for other people and the interest and the, the passion and I, yeah, I wish I wish I could share it more. I, I do. I, I, you know, even I watch my kids who are going through their GCSEs at the moment, and it's all. I'm like, but learning's great. Yeah. <laughs> we can make this fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's great when you when you don't have exams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, but but it, you know, it's it's, it's and, and that was one of the reasons. You know, looping around to the home education, um, that was one of the reasons I home educated was to reignite the wanting to learn. Oh, wow. you know, yeah. and that that that's what the home ed did it was like oh you know he'd he'd go off and to a shop or, or a drum lesson and do read things in front of them or yeah. go to a forest school and learn stuff because he was out in the open and he could move and yeah like yeah. I say it didn't set him back that year yeah. out at all. Oh, fantastic mm. I say so like with most of your clients um what what processes do you use is it mainly emotional freedom therapy which is tapping for those yeah who- yeah it is mainly emotional freedom techniques um that I do um but I guess with all that underpinning knowledge yeah, uh, uh, yeah. you you bring more to it with the trauma inform- informed stuff with um mm. The NLP background with the uh, I did a basic qualification in counseling the MBIT coaching yeah. and I think it, it I guess you end up developing your own style don't you yeah. in, mm-hmm. in what you do and you, you know and I've, I've had mentoring and I've, I've I've had EFT with other people and I, again it's this pick and mix I keep saying yeah. about a pick and mix but I think you take what you need Mm, absolutely um, and then yeah. you apply that um as as and where you go and you just keep growing and, and keep shifting it's that yeah. shifting I think we're always shifting and we're always yeah. growing so, yeah. but, but EFT I think it, it it's just such an amazing tool yeah. I do think it's an amazing tool and I think um I would love to see it used in all schools oh yeah. real for stress yeah. yeah yeah I think yeah for stress and you know I keep saying to people right there, there's the diagram do it when you're at home you can yeah. do no harm with this tapping thing oh, you know so yeah. just crack on with well I'll do the deeper stuff with you that's fine the trauma stuff I'll do with you yeah. but you can do the stuff when you're feeling anxious or stressed or unhappy yeah. you know I, th- th- there's no reason why you can't do a bit of this as work on yourself as well oh, um that, yeah. so yeah I'd like meditation the, the meditation is my other passion I think yeah. meditation was that was me crawling out of the ME so okay. you know one okay. thing I did do I didn't like mindfulness meditation I would oh, like to have that I, because really? the last thing I wanted to do yeah so despite what I've been saying about going back to the somatic practices yeah when I had ME the last thing I wanted to do was be in my body it was painful it was wow. agony it was hurting me mm. so so I would often just you know lie down and just find a meditation to do I'm yeah. a bit of a hippie I'd have some crystals as well I'm doing this because I had one on my chest all the time I had a labradorite oh. on my chest and and yeah meditation w- was a little bit for me 
and you know and I don't believe this now that meditation is an escape but it was a little bit of an escape for me it was about yeah. working through the mind and and sorting it and then I really came into mindfulness and the somatic practices later but it, initially it's hard and and again you know with your trauma stuff if somebody's suffered like a big trauma sometimes putting them straight into a mindful med- mindfulness meditation is not actually the best thing to do no not at all, you know? not at so all it isn't no. it is this mm. is the back to the one size doesn't fit all you know yeah. we don't necessarily go right mindfulness will fix everything oh god uh, it, it yeah. won't because you know if you're in a lot of pain and you've not learned to manage that pain and you're then just focusing your awareness on that pain Ooh. that pain's probably going to magnify yeah exactly um, yeah yeah so there are ways <gasps> and means yeah, yeah ways and means but yeah i did come to mindfulness eventually and, and i use that as well and of course oh, different okay. meditations do different things that's another uh, thing that people don't understand that that, that different meditations can affect different parts of the brain mm-hmm. as well oh, okay mm, yeah yeah so things like your um yeah i can't remember exactly and i haven't got my notes in front of me that's right. <laughs> but, but um but yeah yeah so, so something like a loving kindness meditation so yeah. loving kindness meditation, if you can get in the zone and, and, and do that, mm-hmm. you can actually bring a, um, uh, oxytocin, Ooh. which we know is, is yeah. a cardioprotective hormone. It's the bonding hormone. It's what you have when you give birth. Yeah. Um, and it can actually induce. So it's actually a meditation. It's a hug in a meditation. Genuinely. Um, okay. You know, so things like the loving kindness and that affects a different part of the brain um, yeah. to uh, a mindfulness meditation, for example. Yeah, cause I, I've done some crazy meditations that like, you know, the t- Tony Robbins events, um, they had these theta wave meditations where you kind of put on some headphones and it just takes you on a journey. So it's like hypnotism. You just, wow, you just the go. State, the state of brainwave is the hypnotic state. It's also yeah. the state we sometimes get them into with EFT because that's the suggestive state. That's that's the, the fine line between awake and sleep. It's that middle zone. Yeah. And that's the suggestive state, the hypnotic state. So the okay. theta brainwave, yeah, that's yeah. an important, but but there's a lot of research now. So many years ago, in fact, when I first started meditation, we didn't really know what the gamma brainwave did. And we now oh. know that, that that is a really healing brainwave to invoke. It wasn't even thought to be a useful brainwave, but we knew that the monks did it when they meditated and got gamma. Okay. So people like um, Joe Dispenza, they do a lot of work with gamma, gamma now and studies on the gamma brainwaves. Wow. Mm, okay. Really. Oh really yes. interesting yeah so, so i've got to tell you this though this make you giggle and yeah. um, we're probably nearing the end but um so talking about tony robbins one thing i did train in last year i'm now a firewall constructor oh my god <laughs> Told where, you where, oh my so it, it, is this uh, is events if you ever go and volunteer well if i no not not specifically for tony robbins although um uh, I know who he learned from because um, the guy that I learned from learned from the same guy as Tony Robbins. And actually oh he used God. to support Tony Robbins. It's really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that we, we actually here in, in not far from Peterborough, actually, yeah. uh, it's the, far, the UK Firewall Constructor Centre. Oh my goodness. So what, what yeah. is it then? Like, cause I, I did it twice and I still don't know how I managed that, but what is it? <laughs> Well, How I mean, do that? well, firewalking, when we when you train to do firewalking, you, you experience a number of other different things. We do it over four days. But by the end of the four days, on the last day, we walk over a, um, a, a lane 108 times. We do a walk of 108 walk. We call it the 108 firewalk. So we literally. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Very empowering. Very empowering. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. And is it like just get, getting in that state? See, like, because I know we spent a couple of hours getting in, this, in that state where we were. Yeah, 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 yeah. And again, there are different theories. Like, if you do get a little, we call them kisses, fire kisses. So, if you get a little oh, burn yeah. on your feet, oh, th- yeah. then the, 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 there's the, the train of thought go and look at reflexology chart and see what the message is. Um, you know, where did you get that little kiss on your foot kind of thing? Okay. Um, oh, wow. but, but yeah, but yeah, you do get into it. You've got to be in a certain state to do the walk. Yeah. Um, because if there's no preparation, you're burn and yeah. yet somehow if you can do the preparation which somebody like me would enco- would would do with you before you did a firewalk then you can walk the coals yeah wow. yeah, but so, not, yeah. I, I guess you wouldn't be doing that with your clients would you <laughs> <laughs> I would like to I'd like to but but of course there's quite a lot to set up yeah uh, you need to find those calls. And, 
<laughs> yeah, you need a fire tender and stuff like that. I am going to do some. Um, oh, yeah. I just haven't, I haven't arranged. I'm, I'm actually in discussions with somebody about doing one in September to run one. So, oh, um, yeah, yeah. Oh. So we'll do. We'll do. Congratulations! Do yeah, mm. God, I love that. You just do like these the most amazing things. <laughs> I just love it. It's the learning and it's the empowering and it's the growth and it's mm. you know, for me, it, it's the way forward. Yeah. yeah. So, who inspires you now? I'm back to that phrase pick and mix I think different people do different things for me mm, and I, I and I think you know I look at one person I think yeah you you're smart you're clear yeah, I admire you yeah. but I'm also very aware you know of um uh, I, I, there are certain limitations I have in my life that I've chosen to have so I've chosen to have children well oh, I didn't yeah. choose to have twins I got twins yes. um but I, I therefore chose to do certain things with them and so so that means I can't go off and have a massive career or spend hours and hours with a lovely website which I keep meaning to be well do so so I think there are choices as well but as long as you're empowered by those choices mm-hmm. I think that's okay and I, you know so I can look at somebody and think do you know what? you've put your all into that but I know I can't right now because I'm not in that position in my life right absolutely. now absolutely exactly so yeah. I think it's understanding that and being inspired by people rather than yeah. being in all of people yeah oh yeah yeah what a great answer thank you and so what are your plans for the future i'm gonna get this coaching qualification um i want to put something together where i can um help continue to empower people and support people Mm. i would would like to get some kind of trust together so i can do the people that Mm. can't afford it um i don't i don't i don't want it to be uh, only for the privileged that can can do these things but there is also that whole sometimes you've you've got to get people to be prioritizing themselves and committing to something so Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that's going to take shape yet um and for me you know my kids are that they're hitting the teenage years I'm I'm, I think I'm about to start traveling and get a bit more independence again (laughs) (laughs) so so, yeah so there's excitement I'll tell you what I am doing um is I'm really embracing my creative side again I I, I've missed being creative Mm -hmm. because life takes over so um my husband and I now go to a little art class on a Thursday morning and um, yeah and I'm making things again and 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 just generally faffing I think creativity for me is when I'm in flow yeah I I want to feel in flow more rather than looking at the pile of ironing thinking I should be doing that absolutely yes (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there's people you can hire for stuff like that <laughs> i know i need to wear the big bucks first <laughs> <laughs> oh wow thank you so yeah we are near nearing the end just wanted to ask you know what what your message is for my listeners today um i think it's 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 take ownership of your health mm-hmm. don't don't wait for a pill don't wait for a fix find other ways you know that the body it that it, it, there is such a thing as homeostasis we can return to to that and there are a lot of ways to do it and it isn't always via um in the uk the nhs system yeah. um and i think empower yourself where you can and if you can't find somebody that will support you to empower yourself wow i that's love that great. yeah that's great thank you it's been an absolute honor I've, I've learned so much by talking to you and i know that you've, you've inspired all my listeners as well today wow thank you thank you for having me bless you thank you ever so much <laughs> keep growing and keep inspiring and keep learning right i, I guess that that's my kind of te- key key takeaways from this talk today and uh, yeah my listeners if you have any questions then where can my listeners contact you or find you i'm on instagram i do have a a website which i I am going to be redesigning the next week so yeah look me up i'm the well-being alchemist in the uk perfect i'll be adding all the links in this description on the podcast and and youtube video so my friends if you enjoy that please do um rate review get in touch it's it'll be amazing to hear from you all we love you stay blessed stay empowered and i'll see you in the next episode (laughs) you <laughs>
Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Victim to Victor. Subscribe so you don't miss out on new episodes and be sure to follow the podcast on socials to keep updated on what's next and share Victim to Victor with family and friends to help grow the community and spread the positive healing energy. You may also wish to join me on the path to self-discovery and sign up to my 12-week self-empowerment plan, which will be linked below.